Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. There's an ancient proverb, I think you'll find it somewhere probably in the book of Proverbs. It says that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him surf. Well, we had cowboy Catholic priest, Father Bryce Lundgren, and his uh, sidekick, Father Joseph Paddock, here a couple weeks ago in Hawaii. Uh, and they we got him out there surfing and uh we're going to be talking story about their time here and about Father Bryce's new book, The Catholic Cowboy Way, when we come back. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. And life is adventure. Life is a story. Uh, I love that, that, that statement in The Hobbit where, the, where uh, the young hobbit says, I wonder what kind of adventure this is going to be. Well, we had uh, an adventure take place here in Waikiki a couple weeks ago. I walked uh, downstairs to the lobby of our condo, which is right here on the beach, and I saw these two men in black standing out there. One of them uh, wearing, uh, you know, the, the black priestly uh, clothes that they wear with the white collar and a big old white hat. Uh, he's only about five foot six, but in cowboy boots, he's about six foot four, uh, maybe taller. And uh, they made quite an impact here when Father Bryce Lundgren and his sidekick, Joseph, Father Joseph Paddock, came out from uh, Montana, the Wyoming area, and made quite a stir here in, in Waikiki Beach as they walked around, you know, at, with, as I like to call them, the men in black. And it was interesting because they had uh, so, some real reactions, some good and some bad. And we had some adventures. Father Bryce Lundgren is known to be a uh, ride bucking Broncos and uh, last week we had him out surfing, so we'll get more of his story. Father Bryce Lundgren, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, it's good to be back, Bear. Good to see you. I know that saddle behind you. That's not just a regular saddle. What kind of saddle is that? That's Bronx saddle, man. Yeah, it's a bron- it looks well-worn, too. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hanging on its wall of retirement. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite an impact when you came out here, but you said you had some... This is what I love about your, your your courage and just standing for the Lord and for the faith. You said you, I remember once you came back, you came back in the house and you had bumped into two different people when you just crossed the street to just check out the waves and came back. Do you remember what you told me? There, you bumped well, into two different people. I, I don't remember what t- I told you, but I mean, yeah. it, it's interesting when you walk around with uh, your clerics and then uh, you throw a hat on top of it, which isn't there to, to draw attention, but it does catch the eye. And, it, and so it's hard to not have a reaction maybe by some people most of it's good people always uh appreciate uh your witness but there there's some and i think it it was a small uh not or small words of persecution wasn't much it was just more immature but uh yeah yeah you have both reactions you had people like putting you down and people yeah Mm -hmm. yeah you know there's a there i have a friend uh, jason jones uh, I'm not sure where he, if, it, if this is his own words, but so often we always accuse the early church fathers of plagiarizing us, so maybe it was an early church father. But he said, when a man walks into a room, uh, you should feel uncomfortable. You should, you know, you know the way he said it, not that way. He said, when a lion walks into the room, might not want to make you feel a bit uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a real man does that. And the, when we would walk along the streets in Waikiki here, uh, it was really, it really uh, caused a stir. And I know some people, um, may have not have said anything, but there's that it, when you're wearing your clerics like that, uh, it gets everyone to stop and think, just to turn inside just for a moment and say, where, where is my life going? You know what? And, and I think that's the way it should be in our life is we're walking our lives as Christians. It should have the impact on people, whether it's o- not, not necessarily even overt how we're, that we're living a, a life of faith sometimes, but it should have that impact that people just are like, Am I living my life the way I'm supposed to be be living it? But I have a question for you, Father. Why are you? I thought you were the man wearing the white hat. You're wearing a gray hat today. What happened? What What's going on? Yeah, well, I'm back in the white sands of Wyoming. <laughs> you can't you can't wear a, a straw hat in January or February over here. 
Oh, with all the white snow on the all the white snow on the ground. Yeah. Well, what was your experience here in Hawaii? What <clears throat> What was your What was oh, your? Oh, it's thoughts? great. Yeah, I I think my overall amazement is that there is a place on Earth that is, is that ideal of a temperature and climate in January. I just, I mean, we're not used to that. We just got a snowstorm just passed through here. So mm. it was amazing. And you guys really did it too. You went over to Kauai, went up Waimea Canyon and cruised oh, around the North Shore. It was, it was a super good trip. I, I mean, from visiting yourself and other priests to getting in the water, uh, surfing, checking that off my bucket list, to uh, um, just hanging out. It was great. Yeah, well, I, well, your experience in the surf, it was kind of unusual conditions. Uh, we went snorkeling one day. Father Joe was out there swimming in, at, in the early morning hours before the sunlight uh, right out in front of our hut condo. And then, uh, and then we went out snorkeling, and the winds had changed, and uh, the swell was in such a direction that the water, the water visibility wasn't that clear. But we went out. We, you guys just were like, took like a fish to water. You guys were just like in your own little world. But I want to ask you a question. What about this time when you decided you would swim over the rocks? Yeah, well, <laughs> I didn't know there was rocks there. Yeah. Uh, hidden under all that nice flowing water is a, is a is ro- concrete coral reefs. Yeah, I was thinking when we were out there, I, I, you said, oh, I'm going to take the shortcut. I know you were getting a little bit tired. And, of course, the shortcut, because the Catholic Church is right next to my house, was I, like you made a beeline for the church. Yeah. And I said, you probably don't want to do that. That's the boneyards. And I don't know if you knew what I meant. <laughs> and then I was swimming along, uh, and I look up. Oh, there's Father. He's taking the shortcut to the beach, which is really means you're going right across this razor-sharp coral reef. And yeah. you eventually becomes four inches of water beneath you you got to crawl across it and this line from hondo came back to me from john wayne and it was when this young boy uh wanted to play with his 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 rough dog and he and he go a guy goes can i play with my dog he's playing with the dog and goes i wouldn't play with that dog if i were you and then about five minutes later the kid's playing with the dog and the dog takes a about to bite his arm off and uh, the mother said why didn't you protect my son and i said i made me a rule a man's got to you know, you know, man, you, you know, man's got to do. I've exactly how he says it. You let a man do what he wants to do. So while you were swimming in, and I said, "Father, don't go in there," and 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 you said, "Why?" And I just heard me say, "John Wayne, do yeah. what you want to do." <laughs> <laughs> but you came yeah. back out into the deep. So that's the interesting thing about life is. We may not know the territory, you know, but we have to follow God's path. Sometimes we think we know a better way. But even out in the ocean, there's actually a path you follow through the around the reef, through the surf, and yeah, no, amazing. That water's got a lot to teach you. Uh, it's it's powerful force. Well, how about your? How did you know? Unfortunately, we didn't have the best board for a man your size. Uh, how was your surfing experience? Yeah, what did I say? Um, uh, yeah, Chris Adu once said, uh, "A fool I may be, but a coward I'm not." <laughs> yeah it kind of was like so I, bu- I went for it yeah you did and i did and then and then the next day we went to pan- we then a few days later we went up and we did stand-up paddling which on the ocean is hard right yeah no i learned a lot there that was uh i enjoyed that it was good and there's a technique to it right i taught you the technique oh yeah no, i know i i got some good pointers you bet and i think it goes back to oh following the you know the wisdom of the church like well um, you know, uh, humana vitae. You know, we're not going to use contraception. Well, that just doesn't seem to make sense. I'm going to take this shortcut, or that marriage is between between a man and a woman, or pro life. You know, I'm, I don't want to do that. I'm going to do it my way. Take a shortcut, and you find out there's a reason why God teaches us the way that He teaches us. Amen. How did you do? How did you do on the uh, on the eventually the stand up paddling? You did great on that. Yeah, no, you give me some good pointers, and we do that around here. But the, you know, these mountain lakes is just glass smooth. Yeah. So the the ocean's not the that's not the case. So that's fun to, uh, you know, to, to get some pointers on that. That'll help here too. You know? No, you really, you know, you really did excel at that. A, but once you know how to do it, you know how to do it, right? It does help. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. It's always easier to to be taught by somebody. Who, who's been there, done that, versus trying to figure out yourself, right? So I think there's a lot of 
translatable wisdom to life in general through lessons like that. Yeah, with the, with the virtue, um, like you don't know, you don't know how to stand up paddle surf until you've fallen a lot. If you successful right away, then you really don't know what you did right. Mm -hmm. But falling and and then working on it and using the technique and that's that's basically the when we pull out our catechisms in the morning. You know, we learn we we can learn the ways that mm -hmm. life the way God wired life to be so that we can mm -hmm. we can do it. We're going to talk to Father Bryce Lunger when we come back about this great book, The Catholic Cowboy Way. Mm -hmm. You can see the picture of it here. Uh, that just has just come out, published by my publisher too, Sophia uh, Publishing. So uh, we're going to be talking about uh, what we can learn from cowboys, a cowboy priest, about being Catholic. Uh, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bears Man Cave Community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite all the men to come to uh, Melbourne, Florida, May 19th through the 21st for the uh, Man Cave Meetup. Uh, if you have a 14, 50-year-old son who you think would like to come with you, he is welcome also, but it's just for men and young men. And we're going to be uh, going, uh, we're going to be going, as we say, uh, raw and uh, gritty in our conversations. And uh, and we're going to go deep with the Lord and also uh, build build. Uh, fellowship and also have some good fun we're gonna have cigars every night down at the beach and get gritty and real with each other so come to uh the may 19th through the 21st in melbourne florida and you can find out more at deepadventure.com so father bryce lundgren is here with us he's the catholic cowboy priest who wrote the catholic cowboy way father first of all where can people find you well my i do have a, a blog while well, catholic cowboys so you can there and it's got website or email address stuff like that but that's about all my uh internet interface you might say no it's awesome because you have mm -hmm. uh, your homilies your daily homilies are posted there and then next thing you know we're watching you guys uh doing our cattle roundup mm -hmm. and uh getting raw and real enough you're butchering a, a cow you're actually mm -hmm. butchering a cow uh mm -hmm. That then you brought, I believe it was cow number 53, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and you brought yeah, those steaks here. You had those mm -hmm. steaks, yeah. So, mm -hmm. Super good. so it's a great place. So in your book, you talk, the, the, one of the titles is, My Heroes Have Always Been Cowboys. What do you mean by that? Well, 
we we learn by experience. So we 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 teach by experience or our example. I guess that's what I was saying. We learn by example and we teach by example. And so I, you know, growing up, I I learned was inspired by the example of mainly my dad and uncles and elders that I was around, but that really shifted in my life when Jesus was like, became my, my hero, my role model. And I started to follow his example that really transformed my life. So I think that's the main point I'm trying to get across in that chapter. There, there's a small section that there's the, there's the flip side that you know, we become like those who we run with for good mm-hmm. or ill. St. Paul mm-hmm. would say, you know, bad company corrupts good morals. So the, we can have the opposite effect too, if we're not running with people who are, running with the Lord, we start to take on their uh, image and likeness in a sense. But the main point of that book is like following the example of Jesus, learning from him in the gospel, uh, letting him speak to your heart and following him. Well, you you often quote, I believe, your father and your grandfather. What was some of their cowboy uh, cowboy ways? They, 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 were, they were your heroes, some of their sayings. Well, I, I mean, what I... What I mainly highlight is I can remember about four things that my grandpa actually verbally taught me. I, st- I still got them, right? But the example of his life speaks volumes to me today. Mm. So that's what I mean by, you know, the example. Our example teaches people. So, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the main point. I mean, I certainly they have words of wisdom. Well, but you can tell a lot more by a man's actions than his than his words. Amen. Generally. Well, just give us a few of those words because we can't see his actions. Give us a few of those, those, those uh, mm-hmm. say that sage advice that he gave you. I remember mm-hmm. some of them myself. He shared with me. Yeah. Well, the these are four examples I would used in the book of my grandpa that he would always say: never, never cut your fingernails too short. Uh, never quit driving. Always wear a hat. And uh, only back up as far as you need, need to, you know. I mean, those actually are sage sayings, a little bit tongue in cheek in a sense, but they have deeper metaphors. Well, what 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 does life. it mean? What does it mean? Don't cut your fingernails well, too like, short. He, Grandpa would say, "Never never quit driving." Right. So he'd say, "Hey, if you're you know you're going down the road and, and something happens, you know, and you're either going to the ditch or there's something in front of you, don't let go of the wheel and just scream. No, ride it out. You know, push through it." Mm. And I remember thinking that, you know, at Grandpa's funeral, he never quit driving. I mean, even in his life, he he never let go of the wheel. He was always mm. pushing through, and you know, little stuff like that for sure. Um, well, what about what about the one about backing up? Yeah, I talk about that a lot, and I talk about it later in the book as well. That you know, reverse is good insofar as it helps you move forward. But too much reverse gets you in trouble. I mean, in a vehicle, that's when accidents can happen. You know, you can't see clearly. But in spiritual life as well, you, uh, you know, you get to looking too far back, shoulda, woulda, coulda kind of stuff. You get yourself in, in trouble then as well. The past can help us in so far as it teaches us what works, what doesn't work. But we're moving forward in our, mm. in, in, in our walk in life. Do you feel you a, a lot of men these days are, have been – backing up the woke culture and all this other thing is, is has a, that men have allowed themselves to be intimidated it's not the woke culture's fault it's our fault because we've been just backing up don't you feel like we've been on our heels a bit oh sure well i mean it, whether it's societal or, or just personal that temptation is always there to to yeah to get us more on our heels than our toes so yeah we um i'm, I'm sure collectively yeah we've been backing up but personally that's when it really gets us in trouble is that i i'm not i'm not following christ i'm looking behind me too much mm. well when you're riding a horse you know my tendency is to just sink my boots all the way in so they're right all the way up against the heel so i feel safe but that's not the way you ride a horse is it you don't ride it with your you, you some ride. guys do uh i never have dad always taught us never to bury our feet I grew up with the story of my uncle getting drugged by a horse and breaking his leg. Mm. So we always ride on the balls of our, our toes. Does it give you more sensitivity to the horse? Or it, uh, I don't know about that. It's just when, when trouble happens, you're not buried and get, get your foot stuck. Well, what happened on so, that but, bronc when your dad gave you that advice about the stirrups? <laughs> what was that about? Well, I mean, 
it's old. I mean, it's kind of a different ball game, but yeah, the book opens up with a story of me cracking out in a, in a rodeo and it's riding ranch bronc, which is using your own saddle, not one like this. But I just come out of a saddle like this. And so that's what I had in my mind. So I jacked my stirrups up real tight. These, these aren't very long because I want to use my swells with mm-hmm. your, with your thighs. And, and dad called me that morning. And he said, son, I think you better lengthen your stirrups because I had them up high because when on a regular horse, things get Western, you, you use your, your legs way down low on the belly and mm. keep your foot in the strip. Mm. <laughs> so I said, dad, I got it. Like, don't worry. I got a game plan. Oh, my feet were out of those stirrups before the horse cleared the gate. Yeah. I was shortly behind. So, I mean, to me, when I hear you talk like this, it just, I just think of that we have the wisdom of the church and we have wisdom of, of, of centuries of the church. And so often we just get, get just get back. What do you say? You bury your boots in the stirrups, and we don't, we don't, we don't listen to the the sage mm-hmm. advice of the church. Well, I, yeah. let, let, I thought we'd look at one of the things that you talked about here that really uh, was deep for me when we would have our mass here at the house, and you gave a homily, and when we were just in conversation, you said something mm-hmm. about sonship. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean that's kind of the 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 goal of it all or or the foundation of the entire spiritual life sonship being our baptismal identity that we've been baptized into the son jesus so that's really our truest relationship our deepest relationships comes with um, my relationship with the father as his son from there then we can serve both in our vocation and our occupation but it's so easy to what i say get out of the saddle with sonship and just, you know, be out there, ah, the world depends on me, and I'm just on top of the waves, mm. just floating, mm. you know. And and I'm not I'm not deeply rooted in the reality. Hey, this all this stems from my relationship with the Father. This is a task I'm called to do. It's important. But the weight of the world doesn't weigh on me. Jesus is the Savior. Mm. You know. We can get so caught up in doing that we forget we're not a human doing, we're a human being. Mm-hmm. And by yeah, our very sure. nature, our nature is to have relationship. And mm-hmm. but how how is it for some men who haven't had the relationship that you've had with your father and your grandfather? How do they find? How do they even approach the word father for them? Can mean something really scary and not comfortable, or something they don't even desire. How, what do you say to those men? Well, you know, even even however good your earthly father is, he's still an image, either good or bad, of the Father's love. So our fathers are imperfect, so they try their best to imitate the Father's love. But like all of us, they still fall short. So some more than others. Like my dad continues to, you know, mirror the Father's love in, in good ways. But it's still pointing to that reality. So I would, and, and I, God bless people who, you know, are in difficult situations, that's, a, that's quite a challenge. But the reality still remains is that God is our Father. That's, that's the truth. So any other earthly father is just a, an example of that to help, help us teach us. So it's not that all is lost by any means. It's just a, a little rougher road, I suppose, to come to encounter uh, our Heavenly Father's love for us because it's it's kind of new. But it's those, those doors are still open. We're talking to Father Bryce Lundgren, speaking with Father Bryce Lundgren. His new book by Sophia is The Catholic Cowboy Way. I love this book. It's a great book for men who don't like to read, and it's a great book for men to read to the, with their sons or to their sons. We'll be right back with more of The Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up. Breeze was sitting at my office desk under the guard of my Texas Longhorns when a gentle breeze came through the open window and ever so slightly brushed my face. More than wind, I recognized it was God's Holy Spirit saddling up alongside me for some time together. My heart warmed up from that awareness that he was making himself more present than normal. 
caused me just to blurt out, I love you, Lord. Sounds odd to say such a thing as men, cowboys at least, just don't make a habit of telling fellers that they love each other. Sort of weird where I come from. Of course, the Lord is someone much more than just a bronco busting sidekick. Well, anywho, it's just what came out of my heart and my mouth. You see, I've trailed up for a long time now with the Lord, nigh on 50 years. Been a rough ride at times, but I've also wandered into some pleasant weather, good pasture land, and finer habitations than I deserve. Over the years, the good Lord and I have become real familiar-like. While Lord and God, he's also become my best friend. Ain't no better. Been riding together so long, I immediately perceive when he rides up alongside that we should stop for a spell for some time around the warmth of the campfire. You see, riding for the long haul with the Lord gives you a leg up over other folks. Things like nearness to God, patience, strength through troubling times, a settledness, if you will, a godly and goodly perspective on life. So, my friend, cinch up your saddle and prepare to ride with the Lord for the long ride home. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Mom, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and uh, especially want to hear, hear, let the mama bears know that they can, tell, they can share with their husbands that we have the Bear School of Manliness available at deepadventure.com. It's a three-year curriculum for uh, husbands, for fathers, and uh, uh, to go through. The men join up with other members of our man cave. And we do once a month Zoom meetups, and we we go through this three year cycle. So if someone were to join now, they'd be on year two, month two, and we'd be going together through that curriculum, which may involve homilies from Father Bryce Lundgren, uh, short sayings from uh, Daniel Markham or myself. Uh, there's written content. There's self assessments, and what's really cool though is fathers can lead their sons through that same curriculum. Their sons get their own login privileges and they can monitor how their sons are doing. So it gives them the chance to look like we're going to be talking about fortitude. Then maybe they're going to watch one episode of Long Ride Home that week, or maybe they're going to listen to a couple two-minute uh, deep virtues, or they're going to read uh, uh, five pages on that virtue. It gives something for the fathers to actually get gritty enough with their sons uh, that they can have a deeper conversation. So the men can join the man cave. Uh, the sons cannot, but the sons can be joined with their fathers in the Bear School of Manliness. So go to deepadventure.com, uh, inviting the mama bears, bears out there to send their send their husbands to check out our site. Uh, we're talking with Father Bryce Lundgren. So Father Bryce, you and Zeke, his book, by the way, is a Catholic Cowboy Way. You and Zeke are out riding on the range, and you, in your book, you say something about uh, being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Which is a little tongue in cheek. There is good vulnerability. You know, he's kind of taught that in seminary to, you know, to be real, really kind of open hearted and be able to talk about things and receive. But yeah, the image I use, if I'm, if I'm riding across the range with my buddy Zeke and I tell him to just open up and be vulnerable, you know, I might get a string of beech nut in my lap. What, but if it, I what, tell him to just yeah. be raw and real, then we might get somewhere. And it might be a lot more colorful than him getting in touch with his feminine side. Yeah. So so what we're saying is men need to get raw and real with each other. The word vulnerable just it's just is just sounds disgusting to me actually. But but to say raw and real, get gritty with each other. 
Yeah. It has the, they both have the same destination really. And, yeah. and you can use them interchangeably, but, but yeah, to your average Joe, if you're just walk up and open up with that, you know, it'd be tough, but yeah, I mean, and the deal with being raw and real is, 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 is to be, is to acknowledge the good, bad, and ugly in my life mm. to then encounter Christ who came to, you know, re- redeem all that is bad and to help us through all that is ugly and to be there in all the good times too. It's not just the, you know, talking about our woundedness and such, it's part of it, but also our dreams and desires. Mm. It's just a way of being, you know, really real is what I'd say. You, 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 yeah, we we need that. The, the brothers, uh, so often we get together, we want, talk about sports or politics, and we don't get real about, hey, my wife and I are having relationship issues or my son's, you know, going in a direction that isn't good. Pray for me. We don't get raw and real with each other. And uh, men are meant to be, even Jesus had his 12. Mm-hmm. And then he had his three, yeah. James, John, and, and uh the Sons of Thunder and Peter, his closest friends. And so we need to actually cultivate those kind of relationships. That's why I think it's so cool, all the the men's movement now where we have uh, small groups and things like that. But interesting thing about you, Father, is that you're a priest, and yet uh, in your in your very nature, in the core of your being, you're 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 a son of God and you're but you're a cowboy too. And you're mm-hmm. and so in your life you're fulfilling your desires, the way God wired you, that you haven't left behind, uh, you know, having a herd of cattle. And, and uh, so can you talk to us about people's desires and their dreams and how God has planted those in them? And Well, you know, it all starts with, you know, grace builds on nature. You know, Tom Aquinas taught that, that we have to act in accord with our nature for, for grace to be active in our lives. So our, our deepest nature is, is human nature. And then from that comes male and female, but then also from that comes our own personality. So the, the, the same grace of God acts uniquely on you as it does on me. So part of my nature is, is, is being a cowboy, right? It's not the deepest core of my being by any means, but it is part of my human nature. And and it really is kind of the heart of the Catholic cowboy way is to, live out of our sonship that deep place of our relationship with god in a human way not just an intellectual idea but like get out there and be fully human so you know okay part of my nature is being a cowboy it's what i grew up around you know and and i still love it today and so when i when i act in that realm it's it's grace it's enlivening that grace becomes alive. So, and, and really it, it fuels my priesthood as well. So it's, a, it's just a beautiful combination combination. And I'd say a proper orientation as well as I live out of that sonship identity is then I serve as, as a father. It's, it's, it's staying in, to- in touch with the source and summit. Mm. That's a cool image. I think it of you riding out on the range sunset yeah one correction and, uh, though, yeah, one correction yeah. that i took a little intellectual liberty zeke actually doesn't chew beech nut he smokes swisher sweets oh that's i don't know which is worse <laughs> 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 my first cigar uh that i you know well i guess maybe i had a swisher sweet in college but when i had a, i built a, ca- a cabin up in montana by glacier park on the north fork of the flathead river a mile from canada and uh, there would be these little no seams that come in. These little bugs would bite me at night. And I asked one of the local guys, I said, what's going on? I, get, I don't see these bugs, but they, they, I, I feel like I'm getting bit. And they go, well, that's why we call them no seams. And the way to keep those away is to have a, is to have a cigar. So I, uh, I went to the little Pole Bridge Mercantile, which is 35 miles away. It's the closest place there's any electricity. And they had Swisher Sweets. So I had my Swisher Sweets and I kept the no seams away. But mm-hmm. honestly, that that opened me up to the whole world of enjoying a good cigar. Okay, uh, fair enough. I, and I would say that a great deal, all these books behind me, somewhere in the pages of each of those books, you will smell the, 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 the fragrance of a cigar, a latent cigar smoke. Because uh, having a cigar in the evening uh, is about a 45-minute 
read, you know, and so I would read and have that cigar, and I learned uh, the G.K. Chesterton way of, you know, the pint, the cross, and a and a pipe, you know, basically, uh-huh. uh, to go into that deep conversation with the Lord. But I want to ask you uh, again about this thing about desire. God, God gives you a nature, like it's my nature to be a waterman, to be a surfer. Yours is to be a cowboy. Uh, but there's also, uh, you know, God gives us desires and he gives us strengths, but also we look at ourselves and we have limitations too. How, 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 do, how, sure. do, all those, how do those two things come together to form the path that God has for us? Yeah, well, there again, it kind of goes back to grace builds on nature. You know, mm. you, you know the nature of a, of a bicycle is not to jump into a lake. Right. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's acting contrary to that. So even in our own personality, personal traits, like, I mean, even surfing, that was awesome. But yeah, it's, that'd be a that'd be a long shot for me to really learn that. I don't know mm-hmm. that it's, you know, kind of part of, of my makeup. Mm-hmm. So there's nothing wrong with that. Right. But it's, it's knowing your limitations, I guess you could say. But then finding your strengths and running with, you know, there's no sense in me killing too much time out there on the waves. Right? <laughs> well, I think limitations too, <clears throat> the challenges that b- limitations bring uh, cause you to grow in virtue. <clears throat> and without yeah. virtue, the strengths that you have are can just become um, tyrannical, right? I mean, it, you, you, you have certain strengths God's given you, but they be, need to be tempered with the virtues and enlivened with the virtues both. Oh, sure. And and so the, 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 the limitations kind of build a little walls around you that say, no, not this way, this way, you know, but also dealing with those limitations. Sometimes it's a physical disability, overcoming that by the grace of the Lord and, you know, and experiencing his grace in that uh, is, it develops in you just, you know, the, all of the virtues so that then when you go with your strengths, when you go with the desire that God's made you, the way he's wired you, then it's all uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. We're talking about Father Bryce Lundgren and his new book is the Catholic Cowboy Way. Where can they find you again, Father Bryce? Well, Wyoming Catholic Cowboys. That's my blog site. And your parish, you have two parishes, I believe? So we just have, we have one main parish here in Gillette. It's St. Matthew's Catholic Church in Gillette, Wyoming. And then we have three mission churches. And I, I generally take care of the mission churches. So I'm. it's a 200-mile Sunday for me. We're talking with Father Bryce Lundgren. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak adventure, plus the three year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Baron Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. 
Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to let you know our episode, our season four of Long Ride Home will be airing soon on uh, EWTN Network. And if you're a member of the Man Cave or of, of the Mama Bears at deepadventure.com, you get to see those about six months before they're even aired on EWTN. So we invite you to go there and become members. We're talking with my friend, Father Bryce Lundgren, the Catholic cowboy priest from Wyoming, and his new book, The Catholic Cowboy Way. Father, what do you mean when you talk about, in one of your chapters here, uh, I believe it's Behold Your Mother. Am I saying the chapter right? Yeah, no, that's, that's the name of the chapter. I mean, it's our, it's our Lord's dying words to us. It's the last oh, words goodness. He says to us. Wow. So they're significant. But, you know, it has obvious connections to our, or to our Blessed Mother. That was, that was who He was pointing us to there. So I talked a lot about her, her role. How beautiful her role is with our Lord, and then how He gives her to us. But then I, I also just talk about the the value of women in general, how they inspire a man, even a, even a celibate man, in a in a chaste way, but just on a on a natural level. And the, you know, the story I use, like in in the branding pen, when cowboys are wrestling calves, there's there's a healthy competition going on. So I see my my buddy Ryan have a nice throw on a calf inspires me to throw on even smoother right but then if you got a cute cowgirl walking around now watch out right the dust is flying now it's not so much your buddy you want to outdo but the girl you want to impress right women women bring that out in men and i and i i would say you know in a super chaste virtuous way our blessed mother did that for our lord you know i just imagine when they when he you know fell to the ground i think it's probably Mel Gibson's Passion of the Christ it portrays us so perfectly, and in Mary and Jesus' eyes meet. He just mans up, mm -hmm. you know, and it's that feminine that brings that out in him. So Mary did that for Jesus. She wants to do the same for us, especially as a as a celibate man, as a priest. She does do that for us. Like I could not be a priest without Mary. And so, and so the uh, the how, how did you come to that relationship? With her, how did you come to that friendship? Well, I had good. I mean, I either again our our earthly relationships mirror spiritual relationships. So I had a great relationship, continue to do so with my mother, but then in in just healthy uh, feminine relationships I had, especially you know those are the more romantic or whatever side. They they would they would bring that out in you, and just even on a natural level, that stuff happens all the time. So then you translate that into spiritual context you know i i mean i'm a one woman man now mm. it's a blessed mother mm. and she just super inspires me to uh both work hard for the kingdom of god you know for you know to carry out my mission life but to stay grounded as a son she she keeps us in the i could say both both the stirrups of having fun and getting the job done that's cool that you said that having fun and getting the job done yeah I mean, like when, I, when I'm doing this radio show, I never feel more like myself. Mm -hmm. I know it's the way God wired me. I never, I also never more exhausted than afterwards because I've given yeah, everything, sure. given everything to it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so what is your chapter about going fishing? What is what is that about? Yeah, it's a fun one. It's the last chapter on going fishing, and I open that story up with like or that chapter with uh, he's visiting my cousin. He farms full time. Right. So I just ran into him. So I'm like, hey, man, how's, you know, what's been going on? And he said, oh, I've been fishing for Sauger. And it blew me away because usually guys like that, you know, hey, what's been going on? You know, oh, man, I'm just super busy. You know, I'm just, man, mm -hmm. we're planting this and that. You know, you're always you're focused on work. But Clint wasn't focused on work, even though that's all it, he was basically doing. You know, it was pretty much working. He was fishing. In his heart, he was fishing. Mm -hmm. Right. He was, um, he wasn't just so sucked into the the will of work that he, he, mm. he didn't have that lightheartedness. So, okay, that's that's kind of where the, the title comes from, more or less. But it's the idea there is to spend time in our own personal fishing hole. I'm not even a fisherman, honestly. But, like, going back home and working on our little place and and doing some of the cowboy stuff, that's that's fishing for me. But also, and then the, the, the main kind of virtues there like taking time in leisure 
you know, taking time to like intentionally commune with the Lord on a natural level, mm. but devoid of digital technology, mm. letting him speak on a natural level, mm. pondering deeper things in life. But, uh, but then I go, uh, this is probably the hardest, the toughest point I make in the book is that, you know, that many people would agree that going fishing is a good thing, but few would actually take the time to do it. Mm-hmm. So, hey, God has built a day into the week to, to allow us to go fishing, mm. to be recreated in Him. It's called Sunday. Mm. So Sunday is meant to be a day of rest and not just sit there twiddle my thumbs, but an authentic day of fishing, leisure, pondering, communion mm. with God, communion with each other. Okay, that's why He commanded it. He didn't just say, hey, this might be good for you. Commanded it, still commands it today. And that I think that's probably the hardest point in the book is to actually take Sunday as a Sabbath rest. I, I noticed that when you and Father uh, Joseph Paddock were here. <laughs> Talking with Father Bryce Lundgren, by the way, the author of The Catholic Cowboy Way. It was really cool because you actually took every day uh, liturgically. Mm-hmm. On, on feast days, especially Father Joseph, he'd go down and have an ice cream at haagen you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. I mean, but to actually live each day intentionally. And for me, i got to tell you, I'm a Martha, you know, by my mm-hmm. nature. Sunday would mean just, good, I only work a half a day on Sunday, you know. Um, and, and we have to intentionally take that, carve out that space. So for me, honestly, uh, sojourning on the golf course alone, mm-hmm. you know, is different. I, my wife and I go, or my son and I go, but sometimes I just go. Or, or out stand at paddle surfing, mm-hmm. you know, or sailing. It takes, uh, it takes me out of my element, and it lets my thoughts just drift. And then I kind of have a... It's we call here in Hawaii. We see people come out for recreation, but I tell them also it's recreation. As you take that time out, then something a deeper. It's not like playing computer games or watching a football game on Sunday. It's actually taking the time away from all the busyness, letting your mind rest, turning off that, and letting the Lord speak. Yeah, and the and the, the purpose of it, the beauty of it, is that the orders are weak. Mm. Sunday is the eighth day. And it, it's a it's a taste of heaven on earth, and so mm-hmm. it gives by intentionally making Sunday the center of not only our week but our lives. <laughs> then our then our lives become ordered around God, mm-hmm. and not just you know blindly spinning out of control. So it's got it's got purpose to it, you know. It, it's a taste of heaven on earth. Mm-hmm. What would you say to young men out there right now that are in that <clears throat> sixteen to twenty two year old that kind of that that age group what would you what would be your counsel to them what would be like your grandfather's counsel to them mm-hmm. or what words would you have to them as that at that as that sage yeah. catholic cowboy priest well you know i i go for it right don't be afraid to to follow christ with all your heart mind soul and strength he leads us to happiness he leads us to fulfillment he leads us back to the father and he and he shows us our mission in life so don't be afraid to go all in with him and it, that's a prerequisite to discipleship like full-on drop in the nets and that'd be the ideal age you know that mm. adolescence that to your 25 i mean there you don't have a lot of baggage yet let it go follow christ with all your heart mind soul and strength well said we're talking to father bryce lundgren who i have so thankful is in my life and uh, his book is called The Catholic Cowboy Way. It's just come out. And I think every father <clears throat> should read this to their sons. And I think the daughters, too. But, I mean, I just think of, uh, of um, I can see in this book your love for your own grandfather and your father and the wisdom that they've given mm-hmm. you. But it really, mm-hmm. gi- it really gives a fresh look at a raw and real and gritty look, I may say, mm-hmm. of The Catholic Cowboy Way. Thank you for joining with us today, Father Bryce. Amen. Thank you, brother. Uh, Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wasting Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wasting Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.